Hi everyone, my name is Anagha and I'm part of the Data Science Discovery staff and in this video today we are going to be uh, working with questions that are related to confounders, causal links, um, or variables that are neither confounders nor causal links. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we have a question about cannabis and mental health. So a recent British study tracked down thousands of people over 27 years to examine the effect of cannabis on mental health. The study, so it uh, here it says we just tracked down thousands of people. The study found that people who used cannabis had roughly a 40% higher chance of developing a psychotic disorder later in life. So in this study, there may be differences between the two groups that could confound the results, right? Decide which of these variables are confounders, causal links, or neither. So before we get started, I just want to clear up what confounders and causal links are. So confounders are essentially... Let's start with causal links. Causal links are basically variables that are related to the treatment. It is a variable that may be something in the treatment that directly causes the response. A confounder is a variable that is both related to the treatment and the response, and a variable that may cause both the treatment and may cause the response. That is why uh, when we deal with confounders, they might be very misleading, right? Because you may think the treatment itself caused a response, but it was actually the confounder that was causing that response and that it was related to the treatment. So that's why we may have not controlled for that in the first place. So this variable here, we have genetics, right? And first, let's go ahead and ver verify what our treatment and response variables are. So our treatment uh, variable is basically cannabis, right? Using uh, cannabis. So I'm just going to write that here. And then our response is basically developing a psychotic disorder. So we can say um, psychotic disorder. So when we have here genetics, some people are more susceptible to developing a psychotic disorder than others. So here, let's try to find out how this variable genetics relates to both the treatment and response. Well, we know here it says some people are more susceptible to developing a psychotic disorder than others. So we know that genetics, because of some people's genetics, some people may be at a higher risk of developing these disorders than others. So we can say that genetics may be a cause of a you know, higher chance of psychotic disorder in some people over others. But does genetics even relate to the treatment? Does it even relate to cannabis? Well, there's, no, there's not even any link here, right? How does genetics even relate to cannabis? And it's not even mentioned anywhere in the statement, right? So that's kind of a clear... A clear um, guide here that this variable is neither a confounder nor a causal link because it's actually not even related to the treatment at all. For these two variables, they both need to be somehow related to the treatment and response. But genetics, even though it's related to the response, it's not related to the treatment at all. So it's neither confounder nor a causal link. So now you have here neurotransmitter interruption. Cannabis is, uh, interrupts important neurotransmitters like dopamine that could lead to disruption of the brain's communication system. So we have our variable that you know we're deciding is basically these neurotransmitter uh, interruption that is contained within cannabis, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and box this and then our treatment is the same response psychotic disorder that is also the same now <clears throat> it says here cannabis interrupts important neurotransmitters like dopamine that could lead to a disruption of the brain's communication system. So because of cannabis, that leads to these neurotransmitter interruptions, right? That is something that is actually contained within cannabis, right? This cannabis leads to these neurotransmission interrupters, which lead to a disruption of the brain's communication systems, which, you know, may uh, therefore, like it's implied that it would cause a psychotic disorder. So 
here we can see that this variable that we're talking about is really something that is within the treatment itself and directly causes the response, right? The cannabis includes these neurotransmitter interrupters, which then lead to this disruption of the brain systems, right? So we can see here that this variable is actually a causal link just because we know that this is something that is contained within the treatment that we can say has a direct, you know, cause to the actual response, which is that disruption of the brain's communication systems. So now here we have pre-existing mental health, so that would be a causal link. So the third question is pre-existing mental health illnesses. So I'll write here pre-existing um, mental health illnesses, and then the treatment is still the same response psychotic disorder is still the same <clears throat> and this is the the variable that we are talking about so now let's see how this variable relates to our treatment and response right so people who are mentally ill may be more likely to use cannabis and develop a psychotic disorder later in life so here the pre-existing mental health illnesses these people, it says here, may be more likely to use cannabis, right? So because of these pre-existing mental health illnesses, that may lead to an increase in consumption of cannabis. And these, because of these pre-existing mental health illnesses, people may be more likely to develop a psychotic disorder later in life. So these uh, pre-existing mental health illnesses also may lead to an increase in chance of developing a psychotic disorder later in life. So we can see here that this variable is actually related both to the treatment and to the response and causes an increase in both the treatment and response, right? Because of these mental health illnesses, it leads to an increase in cannabis, but it also leads to an increase in the likelihood of developing psychotic disorders. So this variable here would actually, it's the exact definition of a confounder, right? Because it is related and actually causes both the treatment and the response. So that's why we may be like, oh, we can see a direct cause of cannabis leading to psychotic disorders, but it's actually the confounding variable that is causing the response and may look like the treatment is causing the response. But essentially, there's another variable here in the middle that it is that is you know, kind of misleading or skewing our actual results. So we can see here that the pre-existing mental health illnesses is actually a confounding variable. Uh, now this question is, this study is an example of blank. Well, if we go ahead and look back at the actual description, it says here the recent study tracked down thousands of people over 27 years to examine this effect, right? <clears throat> and it which is found that the people who used cannabis had roughly a 40% higher chance of developing a psychotic disorder. So remember that in an experiment, the researcher has control over what subjects can go in which groups, right? We are able to assign either it's random assignment or another, you know, or another design that we use. The researcher is basically able to choose which subjects go in which groups, right? We're able to divide subjects into treatment and control groups treatment and response groups, but or control versus response groups. Control and treatment groups are, are the same. So here, we're not dividing anyone, right? We're just observing what has happened. And I don't think it would really be ethical to divide, um, to control how much you know, cannabis people can use. I, I don't think that would be a really ethical experiment. So that's why this is actually only study because we're just tracking thousands of people over time and seeing, you know, what are the levels of cannabis they use and the chances of them developing a psychotic disorder, right, if, if they actually did or not. So we can see here that this is actually an observational study and not an experiment at all. So we can right away eliminate ch answer choices A through D because we're just observing these people over time, not really assigning anyone to groups. There's no random assignment being done. It's not like subject A has to, you know, have like a lot of cannabis and subject B doesn't, right? There's none of that going on. So our last question is based only on the results of the study. Which of the following conclusions is the most appropriate? Well, 
I know these types of questions can be a bit hard because some of the answer choices may sound the same, but a good principle to follow is not to be too absolute in the answers you choose, right? Because this is <clears throat> an observational study, we know that we can only show that there is association. We do not know for sure if there was a direct cause from cannabis to psychotic disorders because of all these confounders that we just discussed, right? We don't know whether the study controlled for those or not. So we can't say that there's no cause. We're not sure of that. And we cannot say that there is a cause. We're not sure of that either, right? We can only say that there's an association. Sure, there may be a cause, but we're not sure that there's a cause because there may be so many confounders that are messing up our results, right? And we don't know the exact design of this observational study, so we can't rule out these possibilities either. So when we go through these answer choices, cannabis use causes an increased risk of psychotic disorder. Remember, we could only say that if this was a well-designed experiment. And well-designed as in, <clears throat> you know, double-blind, randomized, uh, random assignment, controlled experiment, right? Because this is an observational study, we can't really say that there was a definite cause. And B, cannabis use is only associated with and may cause an increased risk of a psychotic disorder. Okay, I think that sounds pretty neutral to me, right? Because we can say that there is only an association and may cause an increased risk from cannabis to psychotic disorder. We don't know if it does, right? We don't know if it doesn't cause. We, we can just say that there may be a cause, right? And further investigation would be needed to show that if there 100% was or not. So I would say answer choice B looks the best, but we can keep reading the rest of them to see why they're incorrect. Um, C, cannabis use is associated with, but definitely doesn't cause increased risk of psychotic disorder. Again, we don't know for sure if we can rule out this causality here, right? There may be um, better experimental designs that can be done within this study. Uh, we don't know for sure if there was no cause, right? And we would need to control for those confounders to even show if there was a cause or not. So we can't just make this absolute 100% no cannabis does not cause psychotic disorder. There's definitely an association and we may be able to show a cause. We can't just say that no, like it does not cause. And cannabis use is associated with and definitely causes. Well, again, that's very absolute. We definitely don't know that it, it definitely causes it, right? There's a bunch of confounders that may affect our um, our results and then e there's no relationship well there was a strong association so that's why answer choice b would be the best one here so i hope this was helpful uh, if you have any questions please let me know and i'll see you next time bye